How about another liqueur, Jim? No, thank you, Bob. Have a board meeting this afternoon. You have my sympathy. After a good lunch, I like to put my feet up for a couple of hours. <laughs> it wasn't bad, was it? For a provincial restaurant. Oh, you haven't all the cream down south, you know. <laughs> We've one or two places in this old town that can hold their own with anything in London. <laughs> Waiter. Yes, sir? Uh, I'll take the bill, please. And would you make it out to Robert Craig, Frozen Foods Limited? Certainly, sir. I won't keep you a few moments. Off the expense account, eh? Oh, naturally. Could hardly afford to wine and dine you off my meagre salary. Now, come <laughs> off it, Bob. You can plead poverty to the tax inspector, but not to me. I read your last annual report. Your company's doing very nicely. Can't complain. Almost all your turnover, haven't you? Well, uh... Not that it surprised me. You know, your lines have been some of my store's best sellers. They're attractively packed. Fine quality, excellent value. <laughs> the purpose of this lunch was for me to sell you the goods. Well, there's no need. By rights, I should be paying the bill. I want your stuff. Now, you just repeat all previous orders for poultry, fruit and veg. That's very generous of you. Nonsense. Now, what's the position regarding delivery? We had one or two hold-ups last year. Mm. We're still a bit tight for space at the London factory, but things should improve any day now. I'm installing two new cold storage rooms. Ah, yeah? They must cost you a pretty penny. Mm. You can say that again. Still, it seems to be a constantly expanding market. That's why I've thrown everything I've got into the business. Uh, how's that pretty young wife of yours, by the way? Fine. Doesn't she get lonely whilst you're gadding about the country? I haven't heard her complain. I don't understand why you don't employ a traveller. Give you more time to yourself. There's no substitute for personal contact. I've spent years building this business. I've found if you want a job done properly, you've got to do it yourself. Who's in charge while you're away? Alan Scott. I think I introduced you when you were in London last year. Oh, yes. Nice-looking chap. Mm. Distant cousin of Lucy's. Not very imaginative. Frankly, I took him on to please her. Well, if I had a pretty young wife like Lucy, I wouldn't go off and leave her behind, no fear. Uh, your bill, sir. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> oh, that's most kind of you, sir. Uh, I'll get your coats. Where are you off to now, Bob? Uh, to the garage to collect my car. Driving straight back to London? Yes, fortnight away. I mustn't be late. Promised Lucy I'd be back in town by 4.30. Sign. London 70. Yeah. With a bit of luck, I should be back at the flat by four. Oh, the roads are empty, that's something. The old bus is running well. 55? Come on, now, you can do better than that. That's better. Hey. Yeah, what the? I can't hold her. God, there's something wrong with the steering. Have you found the trouble? Yes, sir. Uh, it's simple enough. The nut on the track rod slackened off. Here, take a look. Mm. How did that happen? Who can say? Depends. Might have been left that way after a service, so it's very unlikely. Then I suppose it might have come loose by itself. Vibration. Vibration? Mm. Unusual, but there's always a first time. You certainly were born lucky. If you'd met any oncoming traffic, I reckon you'd have had it. As it was, I only missed that tree by inches. Oh, not a scratch on the car. Yeah, better give it a thorough check all the same. Sure. Uh, meanwhile, is there a phone I could use? Uh, yeah, there's a public box round to the left. Lucy? Lucy? Anyone at home? Yeah. How's the time? Mm, almost 5.20. I'd better ring the factory before it closes. Miss Collins, when you answer the phone, would you kindly say Craig's Frozen Foods, not just hello? This isn't Miss Collins. She's out of the office. What? <laughs> it's about time you recognise my voice, darling. Lucy? Yes, Lucy. I'm certainly glad I don't work for you, Mr. Craig. <laughs> what are you doing at the factory? I waited at the flat until five. When you didn't show up, I thought you must have come straight here. But what happened to you? Why are you so late? Oh, I'll explain later. 
Well, I shan't be long, darling. I'll ring for a cab right away. No, it's all right. I'll pick you up. Oh, don't bother to make a special journey. I'm not. I've got to come down there anyway. I should be with you in about uh, 20 minutes. Oh. oh, Bob, you startled me. Don't you ever knock? Yes, but not on the door of my own office. <laughs> oh. Darling, you look wonderful. <laughs> Here, on your feet. Mm. Bob, we're not at home now. Who cares? But Alan might walk in. He usually knocks. Mm. Mm. Well, what are you staring at? You've been overdoing it again. You're looking tired. Am I? And pale. Well, I'm not surprised. I had a spot of bother on the way down. Oh? Uh, my steering went adrift outside Milton. I still can't believe I'm not swathed in bandages. Are you all right? I'm in one piece, if that's what you mean, but it shook me up, I can tell you. How did it happen? Oh, a nut came loose or something, I don't know. I tried to phone you from the garage, but the line was engaged. What time was that? Oh, about three. Three? Oh, yes, Alan rang to ask when I was expecting you. Hmm? Where is he now? I don't know. Probably down in one of the new cold storage rooms. He's worked like a Trojan while you've been away. Well, that's what I pay him for, isn't it? He was determined those storage rooms would be finished by the time you got back. <laughs> I made it quite clear they had to be. If sales should drop off and you haven't got enough cold storage space, you're in dire trouble. Then make sure you have enough space. The cost, my love, the cost. Refrigerators are expensive. You're becoming very mercenary in your old age. Hmm? Think so? Well, you'll change your mind when you know where I'm planning to take you this evening. Where? The Lagonda. <gasps> Bob! That's outrageously expensive. <laughs> now, who's being mercenary? <laughs> but what's this suddenly in Adolf? Well, must there be a reason? Hmm. Well, let's say... to celebrate the installation of the new cold storage rooms. Oh, how romantic! <laughs> <laughs> Bob? Hmm? Why don't we ask Alan along? What? He's worked so hard, it would be a nice gesture. Well, I suppose it would. But it's my first night back, and I'd rather look forward to spending it alone with you. All right. I only thought that... Perhaps some other time. Now I must go and find... Uh, come in. Oh, hello, Bob. I wondered whether you'd arrived. Yeah, I was just coming to look for you. Did you have a good trip? So, so. Bob had a narrow escape on his way back. Oh, what happened? My steering failed. Is the car all right? Just. Hmm, that sort of thing can be nasty. You can say that again. Well, I hope the trip was worthwhile. Well, we've increased orders from the multiples, though Stacy's were complaining about the quality of the fish fingers. Oh. And when I got to Farnworth's head office, they told me their weekly delivery of poultry hadn't arrived. Yes, I know. But there's no shortage. Why wasn't it delivered? <sighs> well, everything was set, but as the drivers were about to load, they found there was no dry ice. But we've half a ton permanently well, on order. I rang the ice company, but apparently something had gone wrong with their plant. Well, did you try anywhere else? <laughs> no. Why not? Well, they said we'd get our supply the following day, and we did. And meanwhile, Farnworth had to go without their supply of poultry. Well, I didn't think a oh, day really? would be. Bob, it's hardly fair to blame Alan. After Look, do you know how long it took me to break into the Farnworth chain? Two years. I had to compete with the local farmers and every frozen food business in the country. But, Bob, I... And now, because you didn't think, I'll be lucky if they ever give us another order. I think I'd better go. <sighs> what time can I expect you, Bob? I'll be back as soon as I can. I'm sorry about the Farnworth order, Bob. I, it, it's been such a hectic week, what with all the installation going on. I, I wanted to be sure that the storage rooms would be finished. And are they? Well, yes. The last engineer left at midday. They, they've done an excellent job. Why not take a look at them? I know you'll be pleased. All right. Lead the way. This is the door of number one room. Mm -hmm. Number two is further down the corridor. No handle. Oh, that's stated. These are automatic. You press this button on the right-hand wall. And hey, presto, it's open. The doorway is large enough for a mechanical truck to drive straight in and unload. Oh, good idea. But what about the temperature rise when the door's open? Well, they say it's negligible. The room's at minus 20, and if it should rise above zero, to save the food spoiling, the door closes automatically. Hmm. I'll just have a quick look inside. Hmm. Should have brought my overcoat down with me. <laughs> yes, the cold air hits you, doesn't mm. it? Where are the racks going? Well, I thought along the side and um, then in rows about three feet apart. Mm, that's cutting it fine. Better make it four feet. Right. And I should store the fish and poultry in here and the fruit and vegetables next door. But that's what I had in mind. Mm. Ooh, certainly is nippy. Well, the 
the temperature gauge is reading minus 19. Well, right, let's get out of here. Do you want to inspect the other room, Bob? No, I won't bother tonight. I'm taking Lucy out to dinner. I must get back and change. Bob, darling, hmm? do you mind if we sit down? I've had enough. Oh. Hurry, before the band starts up again. Right. Oh, my feet. Oh, hmm. that's better. Yeah. Oh, like a cigarette? Oh, yes. Try one of mine, darling. Mm -hmm. Then you. Oh, thanks. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Uh, is that a theatre program in your bag? Yes, it is. Hmm. May I have a look? If you want to. Hmm. Prelude to murder. Mm. A thriller. <laughs> I suppose you'd call it that. Alan had a couple of tickets and asked me if I'd like to go along. I see. I didn't think you'd mind. Why should I? As a relative, I suppose he's entitled to take you to a theatre once in a while. <laughs> well, next time I hope he chooses something a little less morbid. It wasn't at all my cup of tea. Though I must say he adored it. Hmm. <sighs> go anywhere else while I was away? Oh, a concert or two. With Alan? Once. Uh, talking of Alan. Yes? He seemed to run things very well while you were up north. <laughs> the way I have the place organised, it runs itself. Aren't you pleased with him? No, not very. But six months ago, you were talking about making him a partner. Yes, well, since then, I've had time to think about it. I've changed my mind. But why? Well, to put it bluntly, he lacks imagination. There's little point in taking him into the firm if I can't trust him. What do you mean? Oh, look at the way he handled that Farnworth order. As I said, no imagination. It's never a good thing to have relatives working for you, however distant. It's difficult to keep things on an impersonal level. What do you intend to do? Frankly, it would be easier for all of us if I gave him notice at the end of the month and had done with it. I think you're making a mistake, Bob. No? Wouldn't be my first. Now, let's drop the subject. I've had my fill of Ellen for one day. But, darling... Oh, come on. Let's dance. Look, the floor's less crowded now. You better hurry, Bob. You'll be late. Uh, I shan't be going to the factory for an hour or so. I have one or two things to clear up first. Oh. Um, will I be in your way here? No, I'll just get rid of the breakfast things. Uh -oh. uh, no, Bob. Stay where you are. I'll answer it. Hello? Lucy, it's Alan. How did you get on last night? I can't talk to you now, Alan. Bob's decided to work at home. I'll try and drop by the factory later on. But, Lucy, I... Goodbye. Have you finished with your cup? Uh, yes, thanks. Who was that? Oh, no one, darling. Just a wrong number. We'll be all right in here, Lucy. Miss Collins has gone down to the bank. Well, did you talk to Bob? I tried, but I'm afraid I wasn't very successful. But didn't he say anything about the partnership? Yes. Well? That he'd thought about it, but decided against it. But he promised me. And that's not all. What do you mean? I don't think he's going to keep you on. What? I'm sorry, Alan. I might have guessed. Look... And don't say anything to him for a moment. And and perhaps I might persuade him to change his mind. When I think of the way I worked this past six months, I could... Alan. What? Bob's car's down there in the yard. But I, I thought you said he was staying at home to work. He must have changed his mind. Oh, now, I, I don't want to bump into him if I can help it. I'll go down by the goods lift. All right. Now, Alan, promise me you won't do anything rash. Well, all right. But you'd better go now. I can hear someone in the outer office. Oh, good morning, Bob. Oh, hello, Alan. The delivery of sweet corn arrived. I left a cob on your desk. I'd like you to take a look at it. Oh. Huh. This it? Hmm. It's a bit pale, isn't it? Uh, that's what I thought. It's nice and firm all the same. I think it'll process well. 
Has Lucy been in this morning? Lucy? N not as far as I know. Why? Uh, her gloves are on my desk. Must have left them here when she dropped by yesterday. Very likely. I'll be in the factory if you need me. Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, hello, Bob. I thought everyone had left for the night. Oh, I shall be going in a few minutes. But how did the sweet corn turn out? Oh, not at all bad. If you'd like to come into the cold storage room, I'll show you a sample. Hmm. I'd have brought you a sample earlier, but uh, it didn't leave the processing plant until 5.30. No, after you, Bob. The sweet corn's stored over this side. It isn't as cold today, or is it my imagination? Hmm. Seems much the same to me. Here we are. This is a, a 12 ounce pack. What do you think? Mm. Looks a bit anemic to me. Sweet corn should be a nice, rich, goldy colour. Dry summer was probably to blame. Still, it'll do. I can go back on the shelf. Right. Oh, while I remember, there's a large order from Star Hotels for strawberries and also chicken pies. How much stock are we carrying? I'm not sure, Fan. If you'd like to check the fruit in here, I'll go next door and check the pies. Okay. I shan't be long. Right, strawberries. Oh, what have we got here? Raspberries. Uh, Loganberries. Ah, here they are, strawberries. There's a gross in a rack. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six gross of 12 ounce packs. Yes, that ought to cover the order. Bass! Lights gone out and the door's closed. Oh, I know what's happened. The temperature must have risen and the door's shut automatically. Ah, oh, these newfangled ideas. Gow. Oh. Of course, there wouldn't be a handle on the inside. Blast. Alan! Alan! Yeah, I expect he's still checking those pies. Anyway, I doubt if he'd hear me. The door must be at least six inches thick. <sighs> what do I do now? Just wait, I suppose. Oh, he's bound to be through in a minute. I wonder what the temperature is. There's some matches somewhere. Uh, oof. Only about four left, so that's better than nothing. Now, uh, where's the temperature gauge? If I remember rightly, it was just to the left of the door. Ah, yes. Oh, just on zero. No wonder the door closed. Should be minus 20. It probably went up when they brought in the last batch from the factory. Oh, come on, Alan. I don't want to be here all night. Alan! Alan! Oh, what's keeping him? But if he found the door closed, he might have imagined I'd gone back up to my office. Of course. Oh, stop worrying. He knows you want those figures. He wouldn't just go off home. You can never tell with him. He's a dead loss. Alan! Open this door! Can you hear me? Oh, God, it's getting a bit chilly. Better try to keep warm. Swing your arms. It's the good old fashioned way. Keep that up for long. <laughs> Out of condition. Now, don't fall off to sleep, that's what they say, isn't it? Perhaps a walk might help. The room's about 30, 40 feet long. I can walk up and down between the racks. Yes. Uh, down this side will do. right in the gangway, blast them. And I'd better stay in one spot, it's safer. Right, now slowly back to the door. Yeah. 
What's that noise? Of course, it's the compressor. It'll go on working until the temperature drops to minus 20. It's getting colder. I must get out of here and quick. Alan! Alan! I'm locked in the cold storage room. Can you hear me? Alan! 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 It's no use. Now just relax for a moment. You mustn't panic. It may have gone off without realizing what's happened. But then, when I don't arrive home, Lucy's bound to ring him. He'll come back to look for me. If only there was some way of shutting that compressor off. At least it wouldn't get any colder. Now, what's the temperature now? I wonder. Get out of here. If I had something to force open the door. The cold's becoming unbearable. <laughs> I can see the headlines. Man freezes to death in cold store. <laughs> Accidents will happen, I suppose. After all, I nearly had one yesterday with the car. See what I mean, Jim? His nuts work loose. Unusual, but there's always a first time. But if you'd have met any oncoming traffic, I reckon you'd have had it. Uh, must be accident prone. Now I come to think of it, there was that narrow escape last month with the goods lift. Uh, when I opened the gates and stepped into the opening and the lift wasn't there. <laughs> Luckily I was able to grab the wire mesh inside the shaft. And just luck that Fred heard me call. I'd have fallen five floors into the basement. There was that other close call when I went down to the goods yard to have a word with Alan. Mr. Craig! Mr. Craig! Look out, sir! Behind you! Oh. Mr. Craig! You uh, okay, sir? Yeah, fine, but what happened? Oh, I don't rightly know, sir. A pile of crates suddenly tipped over. If I hadn't got out my track just then, I'd never have seen her. Lucky he did. I must be accident prone. There's no other explanation. Unless... Good God, if there weren't accidents, then somebody tried to kill me. I, I, that door... I thought that door closed on its own, but someone could have pressed that button and trapped me deliberately. Of course it was Alan. Alan! He could have meddled with my car before I left London. Tampered with the lift, and levered over those crates, and now he's locked me in here to freeze. Why? <laughs> he's not my heir or my partner. I intended to get rid of him. I told Lucy so. Could she have told him? When? Could she have been in my office this morning? I thought I smelled her perfume. They must have planned it together. Oh, very crafty. <laughs> All he had to do was to press the button and go off home. And when I'm found, it'll look like an unfortunate accident. I must make an effort. I, I must stay awake. It's my only chance. Swing your arms. Swing them. I can't go on anymore. Funny. I feel warm. My mouth's all dry. I can't catch my breath. I wonder what the time is. 
Must be about eight. That's twelve hours before the first van driver will arrive. Twelve hours. I'll never survive. Compressor stopped. Must be minus twenty then. Must make a last effort. Must. Let me out of here. Help. darling. Don't you recognize me? Are you? Yes, darling. Where am I? In hospital. You're suffering from shock and frostbite, but you'll be all right. Where's Alan? Oh, no need to worry about Alan. He's in the next room. He's had a rough time, though not quite as bad as you. What? Oh, well, of course. How would you know? While you were locked in one room, he was locked in next door. Both doors closed within a few seconds of each other. We were both trapped? Yes. He saved your life. He remembered the watchman came on duty at eight, so he tipped over the storage racks one by one. Oh. Fortunately, the watchman heard the noise. <laughs> oh, well, that's better. <laughs> Lucy, will you forgive me? Forgive you? For what? Oh, for lots of things. For being vain, self-centered, pig-headed. And... I don't know what you're talking about. But if you're in the mood for making amends, how about keeping Alan on? I'll do more than that. I'll give him that partnership. Oh, but I thought you said he hadn't enough imagination. Yes. On reflection, I think perhaps it's possible to have too much. Cold Storage by Philip Levine, first broadcast in 1973. Robert was played by Nigel Graham, Lucy by Bonnie Huron, and Alan by John Forrest. Jim was played by Brian Haynes, and the mechanic was Vernon Joyner. The producer was Margaret Ettel. <laughs> 